Hi everyone, it's Karen T. Welcome and thank you for stopping in. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a DIY Ottoman coffee table. <music> This is our family room. This is a room in which life really happens. We watch movies here. We have Christmas here. We curl up on rainy days here. We have lazy Sundays here. Christmas happens, Super Bowl. It's just the space we really live in and we want it to be comfortable. We had this ottoman that we were using and it was good for putting your feet up on, but if you wanted to sit a drink in front of you or just sit anything in front of you, it was a little difficult because the ottoman was very small. So once we decided that it was indeed time for a larger ottoman, then we began to look around. I was not finding what I wanted. Uh, we don't have a lot of stores like at home, store, home goods. We don't have a lot of those stores where you can go in and find the diamond in the rough at a very affordable price. Uh, I do do a lot of shopping online, so I did look around at different places online, and I was looking for like an extra large sized ottoman. And as I'm sure many of you know, the prices can be sky high. I did not want to spend a lot of money, uh, especially not the prices um, that was being asked online. So we decided to take on the task ourselves. And this way we could customize it to look exactly the way we wanted it to. So we laid painter's tape in the size of the ottoman we thought we wanted. We laid that out on the floor and moved around it just to be certain that it wouldn't be too big and that it would also be big enough. The length of that original ottoman was four feet and I knew that I liked that length because it pretty much covered the majority of the sofa. I initially thought I wanted a square shaped ottoman, but this would have been too much in this small space. So we headed out to Lowe's and we purchased uh, three uh, composite, pressed composite shelving boards and we also purchased one or two one by six studs to go around the sides. I decided to go with the three pieces of uh, composite shelving as opposed to just a piece of plywood because the three pieces of pressed wood together came out to exactly the size that I wanted without having to be cut or altered in any way and it was cheaper than the piece of plywood. My husband used his Craig jig to connect the three pieces together and make sure that they were nice and sturdy and they would not flex at all by doing this. We also purchased the legs and all the other hardware from Lowe's. We decided on how far in we wanted the legs to go, so then we measured where we would place the leg brackets so that we would be certain to place them evenly all the way around. And then we attached the leg brackets. have the leg brackets in place we just then marked in the areas where they're going to be screwed in we just put a little dot there so that if by any chance the bracket moved prior to getting it installed we'd know where it was supposed to be laid because we already had the holes there uh, marked and then we just simply attached each leg bracket and moved on to the next one until complete
last leg bracket being installed and after this we will be installing the sides or I guess you could call it maybe the skirting of the ottoman. And these are the one by sixes that my husband has already cut to size. We just added a little glue to them and attached them. He was attempting here to secure it and we found out that his uh, brace here wasn't quite big enough so. And it was okay that his clamp didn't quite fit because we had already planned to also use the Craig on that so it would be pretty secure. So it's being Craigged and glued and it will hold up pretty securely. So here we're just installing it and we've already um, had the holes put in with the Craig so he can screw it into the top part and the glue is also going to help it to stay secure. And on a little side note, if you're going to want your legs close to the edge and if you're going to use these leg clamps, what I would suggest is before you put your side pieces on and secure those, to put your legs in and be certain that you can actually turn them in the event that you would ever want to remove your legs, just to be sure that it's not too close to the sides. So with the glue and the Craig, you're sure to get a nice tight bite and these pieces aren't going anywhere. So my husband decided that he wanted to go ahead and even though everything is nice and tight and secure, he wanted to add a finish nail here. So he's just going around each corner and also putting in a finishing nail. And here's what the finished base part of the ottoman looks like. All put together now with the legs attached. Now we just have to add the batting and finishing pieces. And just as a creative mind works, I'm already seeing another project in looking at this ottoman as it is right now. And as a matter of fact, maybe for some of you, maybe you just want a coffee table. This might work for you as just a coffee table. Uh, you could paint it, you could maybe use a solid piece on top um, and paint it or whatever you like. But I think this is pretty easy. So now that we have the main portion all set and ready to receive the foam and batting, um, which by the way did not come from Lowe's, we purchased this from Walmart. 
So we cut the batting um, to fit evenly across the top and I did not have any adhesive uh, spray so we just used a hot glue gun and glued down the foam pieces. And once we had it all situated into place and made sure all the edges were covered, we were able to apply the first piece and when we attached the second piece, we were able to just pull the foam a little bit to close up the split there in the middle. I wanted extra plush, so I also added that polyfill on top of the foam and we then covered everything in the cotton batting and stapled that into place. Then I just cut away the excess cotton batting. So now that we had the cushioning and batting everything nice and tight, it was time to add the fabric. My husband and I worked together. One of us would pull the fabric while the other held the other side to be certain that it didn't pull. And we just pulled everything nice and tight. So once we had the two opposite sides nice and tight and stapled, we moved on to the other two opposing sides. And we pulled those nice and tight and stapled them as well. But before we stapled, I made certain that my corners were going to come out and be a nice sharp edge. Just like maybe when you wrap a gift or something. And as I got everything smoothed out on the corners, then we began to staple the corners. So when the bottom portion of the fold on the corner was complete, we stapled that first. I used this little uh, wood tool that came with the cotton stuffing. I used that to push the fabric in under the top fold to be certain that it was being smoothed out before I stapled it. Then we just cut away any excess fabric and the ottoman was done. And here's the reveal. So I haven't decided yet what color I'm going to paint the legs, even though I could leave them just as they are. Uh, and also there are some finishing touches that I want to add to the ottoman. My husband is quite pleased with it, just the way it is, but I had envisioned a little more. And I'm going to live with it for a few days or so to see if I still want to add the finishing touches that I was com contemplating adding. So the legs that I chose, I chose because they remind me of the chairs on the side there. They're shaped kind of the same and I was considering painting them black as those legs are. But true story, what do you think about how well the ottoman matches those side chairs there? Pretty good match, huh? And you know that I'm a person that loves and lives for repurposing something. And you know me, if you've watched any of my videos or if you follow me on Instagram, you would know that that beautiful linen fabric is a drop cloth, a $10 drop cloth. That's right. So you all know this project made me super happy. I got a custom made, custom size, just exactly to my specifications, beautiful ottoman. I haven't done it yet, but the plan is to, once some of this rainy weather stops, just to take it outside and use a can of uh, Scotch, Scotch Guard. 
um, and just spray it down really well because we will be utilizing it quite a bit and um, just want to make sure it doesn't get too dirty too soon but if it does it wouldn't be a problem to replace the cover and even if I decided that I just wanted to change the look a little bit I could always buy new fabric or some other item to just give it a little different look So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this gives some of you an idea of how you can create something for your own. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, welcome and thanks for stopping in. Please make sure to subscribe so that you can see videos when I upload them. Once again, thank you all. Uh, this is Karen T saying so long for now.